Every budget build makes uh, at least a few compromises. This is a sub $300 build with a GTX 970 and a Xeon 5650, I believe. We built it in this video up here if you're interested. Uh, but there are clearly compromises at play. The case, first off, like 30 bucks, pretty cheap. Cases that cheap are almost always gonna make compromises. The fans are extremely cheap, extremely loud, no RGB if you're into that sort of thing. The cables, ketchup and mustard cables. Oh, good old ketchup and mustard cables. This is kind of a staple of a budget build, but I have a solution and it's only gonna cost you around 30 bucks or so. Stay with me. The Be Quiet Straight Power 11 is now revamped with an 80 plus platinum rating, meaning you'll stay super efficient at nearly every power load. Enjoy units ranging from 550 to 1200 watts while remaining virtually inaudible thanks to an integrated Silent Wings 3 fan at 135 millimeters. Straight Power 11 units boast a wire-free internal design for excellent heat dissipation and board component integrity for lasting peace of mind in your next system. That's exactly what you want in a power supply. Learn more by clicking the links below. This right here is a kit from Easy DIY. It's a cable extension kit and it comes with pretty much everything you would possibly want in a standard build like this. So you have two six pins in here, two eight pins, both for VGA. And then you also have an eight pin for your CPU, it's EPS and a 24 pin along with cable combs. And believe it or not, you get all of that in a $30 package. And the sleeving here is actually top notch. So these are the combs. You get, I think, four combs per cable. So there's quite a number of those in there. I just wanna show you, start off with this 24 pin, how nicely sleeved uh, this extension is. So I wanna get up close here, Nate. You can see I went with the black and gray option and wow, it is looking fancy. This, I believe this is nylon. It feels like nylon, it doesn't feel like paracord. Uh, but uh, you can imagine, you know, being bent like this uh, in your build and then having cable combs in there. This looks really good. I mean, this is like borderline, like pro sleeve cable mod quality here. I'm not even joking. That, that's saying a lot. Again, 30 bucks for this kit. Keep that in mind. And these right here are the two six pin cables. Again, you get two of these for your graphics card and two eight pins. So it doesn't really matter what graphics card power configuration you have. Uh, this kit should cover it, assuming you're going with just one uh, graphics card. It would actually cover two graphics cards if both of them were uh, eight plus six, because then you'd have two of each. Uh, the CPU uh, is the other cable that I want to show you, because that one, it's a bit interesting in how they do it. So most of these custom sleeve kits uh, come with just a standard eight pin or a standard four pin. They're, they're not really flexible in that way. Uh, but in this case, you can see, you can slide them apart. So if your motherboard only has support for uh, just a single four pin CPU power, uh, then you can split it off like so, all the way down to the extension cutoff down below. So you don't even need to see that in your build. It would be behind your motherboard tray. And you've just got this here. All right, so when it comes to installing these, remember they're just extensions. So it's gonna add a bit of clutter to your case. You wanna make sure that you have enough space, especially behind the motherboard tray to make up uh, for the uh, extra cabling you will need to manage, especially where the extension and the native PSU cable connects. So what we're gonna do first uh, is disconnect each of the uh, cables that we're gonna be replacing or actually extending, I guess is the better word. Two six pins here. We're gonna pull these behind the case because we want just the extensions exposed. Uh, so if we're gonna deal with two six pins, what we're gonna do, use these cable combs. I think we'll put all four on each cable uh, because we're gonna have to travel a pretty good distance to get from here to uh, yeah the cable cutout in this chassis. So the clip for this graphics card is on the bottom. So the cable will connect like this. We want the cable comb to have the, uh, you could do it really either way, but I want the cable comb to show and, and just be completely solid there. Uh, so we're gonna install it from the top. These are actually, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty impressed uh, with not only the fact that the, the cable like gauge is pretty thick, like the, the nylon or whatever they're using here. It feels like nylon, sure does. Um, but you also get, right, four combs per cable and uh, look, they're, they're just plastic combs. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're nothing really special about them. If you went with a Cable Mod Pro Sleeve kit, uh, you could opt for um, some, some metal um, cable combs. I think they're aluminum. But, you know, that, 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 at that point, you're spending 100 bucks or more, more than likely. And maybe not on extensions, but you get the point. All right, so we've got the cable combs installed here for the two six pins. I'm gonna run this through the back. Just gonna hang there until we connect it to the uh, power supply side. And uh, we're gonna have these cables kind of curve over like so. These are not bridged, and that's just one of the downsides of going with a, uh, you know, kind of an all-purpose extension kit like this. Uh, but you can still make it look pretty sweet. We'll try to tie these up 
so that they'll uh, kind of run next to each other. Let's get the combs kind of lined up with each other. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can make do with this. Like th this is certainly workable, especially in, again, a sub $300 build. Actually, something I just realized, we looked this up right before we started filming. This kit is unfortunately sold out and I'm not sure when they're gonna have more stock. So uh, apparently the people that know about these kits are buying them and are very happy with them. And uh, if, if I had like, let's say I was running a company and uh, I was, you know, purpose with flipping PCs, trying to make small profits, I definitely wouldn't spend hundreds of dollars on expensive kits from, you know, well-known competitors like uh, Cable Mod, uh, even like, you know, ultra custom solutions like what Ensource Net does. They do really good stuff, uh, but you're paying a premium for that hand-sleeved, uh, you know, kind of finesse. And they look really good, uh, but in a budget system, let's be frank, they're just not viable. It's, it doesn't make sense to pay 150 bucks for custom sleeve cables when you could buy a $30 kit in a $270 build and it not really make up much of your budget. Because at that point you could be justifying, you know, 150 bucks into a much better graphics card uh, than a, a, ca a cable kit. That's really not gonna get you much in the way of performance at all, actually, cables. Funny story don't help at all when it comes to your frame rate in game. So if that's what you care about more so than aesthetics, and I imagine that's the case for most people in the $300 budget build range, uh, then yeah, throw your money into stuff that actually matters for gaming. So this here is the 24 pin. And you gotta kinda jam this one in. Now the connector here on this board is just a, yeah, just a bit stubborn. We gonna get it in there though. I think we're good as is. And uh, do our best to straighten the combs out just a bit. Oh yeah. That's a good looking cable set right there. Last up, we've got the A-pin EPS. Now it's in an unconventional spot right here on this DX58SO motherboard. Uh, and the little indention for the clip is on this side. So the cable's gonna bend this way, which means we want the combs to be inserted from this side. And there goes the 8-pin EPS. So looking pretty sweet. And I just realized the color theme actually isn't too far off the mark. Uh, we've got some blue here in the GTX 970. We've got blue Northbridge heat sinks and uh, tower uh, VRM heat sinks here. Uh, and then uh, black and gray for the rest of the system. And there's a little bit of yellow here in the uh, stock cooler, but it's not, I mean, it's, it's not bad. If you, especially if you ignore this down here, like we could put like a cheap little cover or something here if that was a big concern, but again, for 300 bucks, I'm not gonna be that picky. Now, we're gonna connect these cables from the back, and uh, this is normally where you'd wanna tie things off, kind of try to keep things out of the way. But you can see there's not much clearance here for cable management behind the motherboard in this case. This is, again, a cheap case. It makes compromises. But the 24 pin itself, even the stock cable, barely clears uh, what would be the right side panel. So this is what I call, what did I call it, Nate? The tuck and stuff method? Tuck in, yeah, okay, anyway, we're gonna tuck the cables in, keep them kind of tight, all right? You wanna keep these pressed down as far as possible. We're gonna place the right panel on, kind of lock it in, all right? We're gonna stuff this right panel on after tucking everything in. And then we're gonna secure it using the securing mechanisms, AKA thumb screws that are totally removable, which I hate, but uh, this is a budget case, so whatever. And we should have properly secured right panel. Uh, yep, looks good. Now let's see what it looks like on the left side. Does it look okay, Nate? Looks good. I need to do a few, uh, few adjustments here on the cable management side of things. It's not too bad though. And uh, 24 pin looks good. 8 pin ATS looks pretty good. I say, this ain't half bad. Now, another byproduct of extensions that aren't really sleeved for uh, a single purpose, like in a build where you know uh, which way it's gonna be uh, bent, which way the, the cable is gonna be rotated, uh, you're gonna have excess cabling on the inside bunch up. Because remember, the outside cables are traveling a further distance uh, than the inside cables. So if you knew which way these were gonna be bent, you could sleeve them in such a way that the inside cables were shorter than the outside ones, and you wouldn't have all this extra cabling here bunched up. And that's kind of what we get here. I can't really pull them much further back behind the motherboard tray just because uh, the, the cables themselves aren't very long. Uh, but that is just a side effect of going with a standard kind of all-purpose kit like this is, is you're just gonna kind of get the, the standard length on both sides. So that's what this looks like. I really hope the lighting behind me is not terrible. But uh, you know, they're gonna look straight 
when they're stretched out, but watch as I bend them, see how the inside cables start to kind of crinkle up? Now it's no longer flat, and it's because the inside cables now have to travel a shorter distance, so they bunch up, usually on one end, and you want them to bunch up on the end that connects to the power supply cable side, because this is the side you're probably not gonna see. You want this side that connects to your units, whatever they happen to be, graphics card, CPU, motherboard, whatever, uh, to look nice and pretty. That's why the cable combs are important, and it's nice that the Easy DIY kit includes cable combs because it keeps it looking nice and pretty on this side. So there we go. A pretty decent color scheme, again, with a few exceptions under the yellow and the CPU cooler is a bit eh. Uh, but elsewhere, things are looking mighty fine, and again, when you tack on the price of these cable extensions, only about 300 bucks for this entire build. What I might even try to do is flip this PC, see if we can make maybe 50 bucks off of it. I'll list it for 400, probably, I'd probably take 350, I don't know. I, I'd pay 350 for this system, it's not bad. Xeon 5650, six core, 12, 12 thread, overclockable, and then a 970 in here, 600 watt EVGA power unit, and then also a 240 gig SSD in a Rosewell 30, $35 case. It's not bad. I don't know, Nate, what would you pay for this system? 500. $500. Are you Hey babe, what would you pay for the system? What would you, what would you pay Can for? Can I pay with your credit card? Pay Can for I it. pay with your credit card? No, you can't pay with my, what would you pay for this? Just throw a number out there, ballpark. Looks like a $500 bill. Looks like a $500 system, folks. Hey Bogle, what would you pay for this system? What would you pay for, huh? I'll tell you what. Press any of those keys if you'd pay 500 bucks. Okay, he'd pay 500 bucks for it. So after assessing three expert opinions on the matter, I'd say that custom sleeve cables go a long way in making your system seem a lot more valuable and expensive than it actually is. And look, if that helps you sell the PC, more power to you. If it helps you appreciate your build that much more, more power to you. If you think these are stupid and a waste of time, more power to you. It's your money. The point is you have the choice between a $30 kit like this, an expensive sleeve kit, something maybe from cable, not that I have anything against cable mod, I've used cable mod kits a lot in more expensive builds, but I don't think they have a place in builds of this caliber because the cables would compromise the entire budget. I mean, you'd be paying almost half of the entire cost of the system for extra cables, and that just makes no sense to me. Uh, so give these a look, just consider them. We've linked them down below, along with a few other competitors who I obviously can't put my name behind because I haven't checked those out, but they appear similar and the ratings seem decent on Amazon and elsewhere. But uh, let me know what you think about these. Give the video a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Click that red subscribe button and I'll catch you in the next one. My name's Greg, his name's Nate. Thanks for learning with me.